Hey guys, just want to quickly remind you about the first Shadowversity meet and greet if you haven't heard about it already. I have mentioned it in a previous video, so I'll just do it quickly here. I'm going to be at the Abbey Medieval Festival in Caboolture, Queensland, Australia. Sorry if you guys are international. On the 13th and 14th of July, though the official meet and greet is on the 14th itself. You're going to get to meet me in person, I'll film a live video, there's going to be competitions, we'll just get to interact, hang out and have a lot of fun. So that's the 14th of July at the Abbey Medieval Festival, link in the description below. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to talk to you a little bit about Roman castles. And there's an important question we should ask ourselves before addressing this subject, and it's this. Did Roman castles even exist? The answer is yes and no. It's complicated. Which is the reason why I'm making this video. The difficulty arises in the complex nature of the specific definition of a castle, because though it is a bit specific, it's also a bit broad as well. The most specific and official definition for the word castle is a fortified medieval residence. A private home fortified for the individual. Being medieval specifically, if you reference castle without any prefix to it, you're automatically referring to something of the medieval period in Europe. But the idea of a fortified residence isn't something that's unique to the medieval period. We do find examples of them existing outside of them, which is why we can kind of say, well, look, there are kind of castles outside of the medieval period, but we add an important prefix to make the distinction between the medieval castle and a different type of castle, like a Japanese castle, and in this sense, kind of Roman castle. But again, did Romans have fortified private residences? Y yes and no. <laughs> There are four close approximates to the Roman castle, and what's interesting about this, two of them actually have the name of the root original origin of the word castle itself. The castrum, which translates into fort or fortress, and the castellum, which translates to small fort or watchtower. And then we also have the dormus, which was kind of like an upper class home for a Roman citizen, and the villa. Each one of these structures are castle-like in some way. But it's important to remember those two words, castrum and castellum, both don't translate to castle, even though these are the root original words for castle. And what's interesting, you have the different pronunciation for the plural version of them, which is like the casta... Ca ca all right, to get the proper pronunciation of these words, because I'm just going to butcher them through the whole video, and also to understand the etymology and origin, the context, we need to get in the Italian man himself, the modern-day Roman, Metatron. I really need your help. Hi there, Metatron here. So, Castellum Castra, what do these words mean, and how did the Romans use them? Well, a quick note on my pronunciation of Latin terms. Please keep in mind I'm using classical Latin pronunciation, not ecclesiastical. Castra, as military camps, is a solid translation. It also had a series of metonymic, used in funerary inscriptions and legal texts. Metonymy is a figure of speech consisting of the use of the name of one thing for that of another with which it's associated. For example, when you say, the lands belonging to the crown, you don't actually mean that these lands belong to the crown, the object now, do you? You don't, right? Castra can mean the army. It can mean military service. A metaphoric usage of castra can mean political party. All of these eventually were fully integrated in the official language and used in legal texts. In castra ire, castra fugere. Another example is the expression mater castrorum, which was an honorary title for the wife of the emperor, first attested with Faustina, wife of Marcus Aurelius. So we have a few possible variants of castra, so the legionary encampments, permanent ones were called castra stativa, standing camps. The less permanent one were castra aestiva, or summer camps. This is because summer was the military campaign season. In castra aestiva, the soldiers would be housed in tents. For the winter, instead the soldiers used a castra hiberna, winter camps, which had barracks and more solid materials, including stone walls and public buildings. Okay, back to Shad, off I go. Ah, thank you, mate. And guys, if you do not know who the Metatron is, you have to go check out his YouTube channel. It is phenomenal. We're good friends, me and the Metatron. He makes superb content. He's just recently made a couple of videos reviewing and also doing a historical analysis of Sekiro, Shadows... Sekiro? Sekiro? Sekiro. Sekiro. Shadows Die Twice which is a bit of a contradiction, because that name should be Sekiro, Shadows die a couple of thousand times before you finish this game. 
Now, the castrum, which is the Roman fort or fortress, looking at the more fortified versions, which have ramparts, towers, and crenellations, these are all very strong castle-like elements, but it's missing a key distinctive feature, and that is a larger primary tower or great tower that has a defensive position either attached to the wall or inside the walls. One of the features that you'll notice with Roman fortresses is that all their defences are on the outside. They're generally in a square formation as well. They, they love squares, Romans. Not to say that's a universal thing. They, of course, had sometimes rounded half towers and round kind of things, but generally their fort's always in a square format. And the fortification defences, all on the outside. There are no internal divisions making fallback positions or a primary fallback tower that if any of the bailey was taken, or in this case just kind of the internal courtyard, no main fortified building to fall back to. Did all castles have a primary keep? No, some actually had several. Some castles had those defensive towers that kind of wrapped around the outer wall large enough to basically be individual keeps in and of themselves. Perfect example is Carnarvon Castle in this case. There's no separate main primary defensive tower, it has several of them. But in any regard, in all of those instances, we're kind of missing those on the Roman fortress. But not in every instance. There are cases where the Roman fortress design, the castrum, matches quite strongly classic castle design. And this is generally a difference in their size, their footprint, if their footprint is much smaller and they have a much larger primary defensive tower or several, that Roman fortress can match a castle by design, but not necessarily by definition, because this fortress is not someone's private residence. In a lot of instances, Roman fortresses were much larger because they were housing a very large number of soldiers, to the point that they would be considered the size of villages or even small cities. Such fortresses are too large to be considered castles. But if those fortresses have a smaller footprint and match classic castle design, we have more justification to call that structure a Roman castle, kind of. It's still not someone's private residence, but was every castle a private residence? There were medieval castles that were not someone's residence, but were purely military fortresses. The Crack de Chevalier is a primary example I can give, and another great example is Mulbork Castle, the headquarters of the Teutonic Knights. Military fortresses, not someone's private residence, and these castles were big. But what we have to understand about these castles is they're the exception to the definition. They don't define it. Most medieval castles, and I mean the larger majority of them, were much smaller and was someone's private home. But because there are some examples of castles that were purely military fortresses, could we extend that, you know, definition to a Roman fortress? Not really. These castle fortresses that I mentioned are still defined as castles primarily because these are still medieval structures with castle design elements and fortifications. Remember, the word castle specifically refers to a medieval building, which is why there's some more allowance for those fortresses in the medieval period to be defined as castles, because they are medieval and share all the defensive elements, even though they're not really someone's home. They can kind of get away with it. It's harder to extend that to Roman fortresses. And don't get me wrong, there are some very loose applications of the definition of castle in the modern day, really now to any castle-like building. But those are referring to those buildings that have a distinct medieval flavour, and in contrast to this, a Roman fortress has a distinct Roman flavour. So it is more difficult to apply the classic medieval distinction, yet also having said that, there's not much medieval about a Japanese castle, and we generally Really call them a type of castle. But again, these are more so that the Japanese castle does match the medieval definition of a castle a bit closer because they are someone's home. Yet those Roman fortresses that match general castle design, well, we are more entitled to call them castle-like at least by design, just not definition. Some great examples of Roman fortresses that match the castle design is the Ain Am El Dabadid Fortress. It's a late Roman fortress that very much matches conventional castle design. Another great example, the Quasar Bashir Modin Fortress. Again, this is a late Roman fortress, about 100-something AD, and it has larger defensive towers with a defined bailey and even a gatehouse. And so out of any Roman fortresses that you would be justified in calling a Roman castle, well, these are two of the best examples. Okay, so let's move on to the next possible contender for a Roman-like castle, and that is the Castel or watchtower, small fort, specifically. Castellum, plural castella, has several possible meanings. The word castellum could mean a settlement, non-fortified, or a fort that has defensive function or capability. 
Furthermore, it also has a very specialized meaning, a third usage. A castellum, within the context of architecture, could be a building which was used to distribute water from aqueducts, in Latin castellum, aquae. But we only find this usage in legal texts rather than literary ones. In this case, they had nothing to do with the military, of course. The usage pattern of this word was highly dependent on context, and it changed over time. A man-made or natural fortification or elevated position is not an inherent trait of the Castellum settlement types. It could be fortified or not. A fortified settlement is only one aspect of its usage in Roman times. Alternatively, a castellum can also mean a bastion, a tower, a part of the defensive fortifications of a city. As seen in comparison with the castra, a castellum was a smaller fortification, as evident from the diminutive nature of the term. The Romans had a huge variety of settlement types, ranging from urbs, kiwitas, municipia, colonia, oppida, burgus, praesidium. The relationship with other Roman settlement types with which the word castellum is paired or contrasted also gives us a hint as to its meaning and usage. The Romans were rather complex people. <sighs> when castellum has instead fortifications, it's then elevated often equal to kiwitas, urbs and oppidum. The word colonia and municipium never appear together with castellum. Now these are legal administrative categories of settlement, so probably castellum as a term is much less of a legal administrative word. Castellum may denote fortified settlements as well as purely military forts, standalone or integrated into a larger fortification system, such as a guard tower or a bastion, but in this case usually belonging to a major city. A castellum is always a fixed installment building, unlike castra that may denote a mobile camp. Castra can be permanent or not. Epigraphic evidence shows that standalone castella was smaller than castra, because castra could accommodate an entire legio, so a legion, and even more. Building inscriptions indicate that castella were built by an auxiliary cohorts, or by legionary vexiliatio, but not a full legion. A vexiliatio, plural vexiliationes, was a detachment of a Roman legion formed as a temporary task force created by the Roman army of the Principate, or early Roman Empire. This is interesting because, again, it's such a complex, sophisticated thing about what is defined as a castle. Some people think a castle has to have an outer wall. That's incorrect. There is a thing called a tower house in the medieval period, where it was just a single fortified tower, okay? And if it had crenellations and battlements, it was absolutely a castle. There are some examples of tower houses that didn't have fortified embattlements, ramparts, crenellations at the top, but they were secured in that they didn't have large windows for people to, you know, climb through. Only one access point stuff. Those, no, I wouldn't call them castles. Those are just regular tower houses. So not every tower house was a castle, but if they had the right fortifications, they could be. And what's interesting about this, for the Castellum, or Roman Watchtower, they do have enough fortifications that you could say, all right, that, that is very much castle-like. Are they someone's residence though? Generally, no, they're a watchtower for a small military unit. In fact, even though I don't know of a specific case, I'm certainly willing to bet this, that there were some Roman outposts and watchtowers that when Rome lost its influence over some of these areas where they had these watchtowers, people would have moved into them and they became some of the earliest medieval castles that we define as castles. The classic mot and tower design, but even if it's not on a mot, if it has a fortified tower and someone's living in it, that is a castle. The difference between this very same building Building that we're looking at is a matter of how it is applied. It's now become someone's residence because the actual Roman detachment that was housed in that outpost has left. Someone else has moved in. It's big enough for because this is the thing, right? These towers are easily as big, if not bigger, than some of the standard homes of the very, very earliest medieval period. Because most of the homes in this period was a single room, and if your single room house could be in a defended tower, why not? So the castellum or watchtower is a pretty close contender for a Roman-like castle, so much so that if you were just to take the Romans out and put a person living in it, it becomes a castle. But Romans did have private residences, okay? Uh, do any of their actual homes qualify as castles? Well, the closest contender is the domus. This is an upper class type of Roman home. What's interesting about the domus is 
it doesn't really have windows on the outside, okay? It follows a similar structure to what you find with a castle in that it rings around itself, forming somewhat of a bailey or wall structure with an internal opening, yet sometimes this internal opening was so small that it was just a skylight above. The thing is, they were made for security as well. They rarely had windows on the outside, and if they did have windows, that was the exception to the rule. More often than not, no windows. You would get your outside light in your dormus from your atrium and your sealed off central courtyard. It had a single primary entrance. This is where the comparisons kind of stop, because after that, there's no real fortifications. and There's no ways to enable the residents of this home to actively repel, shoot back upon anyone trying to assault their home. It makes it more difficult for people to get in, no windows to climb through, they have to climb up onto the roof. Yet, having said all this, the only thing that the Roman Dormus would need for it to qualify quite soundly as a castle, like almost by definition, the, the thing it's missing is it's not in the medieval period, it's not a medieval structure. A castle is distinctly medieval, okay? But to call it a Roman castle, the only thing it's missing is a defensive tower. If you added some type of defensive tower or watchtower to the Roman Domus, you would have what I would happily call a Roman castle. This is the thing. It's not outside the realms of possibility that that did not happen historically. I don't know of any specific cases. If any of you know of some specific cases, please share them in the description below. So it's like a Roman Dormus with some type of fortified component, okay? A defensive tower, or better yet, ramparts and crenellations. Absolutely. We have, this is someone's home, this is a Roman castle. The thing is though, Romans did fortify their residences to a bit larger degree, but they didn't really need to do that too much with the Dormus. They wanted to protect against thieves, but the Roman Dormus was usually in a, a Roman village or town of some kind and they could rely on the military or the outer wall of the city to protect them. What if you had a residence that was not in a fortified or protected village or city? And this is where we get the Roman villa, all right? Now, I do believe there are cases of the Roman villa having a defensive wall around the outside because you had to protect yourself. And if this is a particularly wealthy Roman citizen, they could hire personal guards to protect their home. And this would be a pretty good contender for for a Roman castle if it has those proper fortifications, some type of defensive tower, an outer wall, crenellations. If it's just a home that is somewhat secure with guardsmen at it, still doesn't qualify as a true castle. A true castle has proper fortifications and defensive elements in its design. And so there we have it. These are the areas in which we can find at least castle-like structures in Rome. But what I want to just end this off on now is what would Roman castle design look like? And we can get our information on this from the castrum, the fortresses, and the castellum, the watchtowers. What's interesting about Roman-style fortifications is that you do have crenellations. Crenellations and ramparts is such a specific and important element of castle design, and the Romans had this. What they didn't have is, of course, one of my favorite things, you know, and you know, it's been a while since I've done, done it well, okay, so headphone warning. <coughs> <coughs> Had to do it. Not to my knowledge. I actually feel they had the architectural know-how to do so. So if you find any instances of actual Roman matriculations, Share them with me. But as a general rule, no. Okay, even if you find some instances, these would be the exceptions. The general rule, Roman fortifications did not have matriculations. Just straight up, that's it. The other thing that we find is a lot of squares, okay? Mostly square towers. There are some instances I've found of rounded half towers, but as a general rule of thumb, if you're gonna put a tower on any Roman fortification, and even if this includes if you wanna make a kind of Roman-esque castle, or a castle that was a Roman fortification in the past, which did happen, okay, where Roman fortifications were adopted and then someone's living in and they become castles, okay, and you want it to look, you know, older, old predating medieval period, and you, so hence a Roman flavor. Square towers, including on the the walls or if it's an individual watchtower. Square, not round. And sometimes even on the watchtowers and stuff they had fairly large windows. So is this is this a weakness because people the you know enemies can just shoot right through them? Well what we can infer quite strongly is that they would have some type of wooden barrier in front of it, okay? Protecting any potential arrow fire coming through. And this wood barrier most likely would be a shutter of some kind that you could open, shoot down and shut to protect yourself. In any opening in a stone structure in Roman times you're going to look at rounded arches, not peaked arches. Peaked arches is a feature of gothic 
architecture, which is also seen on medieval castles, but when you get to Roman architecture, it is rounded arches. Rounded arches for the doorways and rounded arches for the windows. The other thing, the roofs on Roman style fortifications and buildings generally were usually had a low peak on them. These higher, more narrow peaked roofs that are kind of more classically adopted on castles. And this is the same for medieval castles. They're generally much higher, not always. They can be lower peaked roofs on medieval castles, but what you can also see is higher peaked roofs. And I've actually made a whole video looking at the roof design of medieval castles. So go check out that video. I'm kind of happy with that one. I, that's one of my favorite. But generally speaking, Roman ones, lower, okay? And this is if it's like a lined roof or even if it's a round roof on some kind of rounded tower. Usually if it's round, it's only a half tower on fortified walls and uh, if it's a, just a single tower by itself always square but again low peaked and that's basically it lots of squares and rectangles low peaks rounded arches crenellations and so at the end of this whole video i actually think the real best contender for a roman castle would actually be those roman military fortresses that were later adopted as someone's home in the medieval period as castles themselves and so you could call them very much a roman-like castle or just roman castle you couldn't just say it is a castle because look at this whole video it's a complex sophisticated subject okay and so just saying it's a castle doesn't do justice to the sophisticated nature of what a castle is but there's some pretty darn close contenders and i think there are some things that you could say yeah it's, it's, it's close it's a roman castle almost kind of stuff it's, it's complicated still thank you for watching guys i hope you've enjoyed big thank you for the metatron for his contribution please do go check him out he's such an awesome guy an awesome channel i hope to see you next time and until then farewell